ground. That's why I think that this 3D is so included. But uh, now there are many faculties, but still there are only three vacancies at the ex officio. Now we have the University of Moratua Dean, University of Peradini Dean, and the uh, <coughs> University of Jeff Jeffna Dean. These three deans are serving the council. And Director General of the Tertiary and Vocational Education Commission. He also member, the ex officio member of the Engineering Council in Sri Lanka. <coughs> now, there are altogether 17, the four members are ex officio members. And there are 13 nominated members. So, this nominated member, there are seven chartered engineers nominated from the ISL. Seven chartered engineers nominated from ISL. And there is another professional body called the Institution of Engineer, Incorporated Engineers Sri Lanka or double ISL. So the it was the the they also have the same hierarchy of memberships. The the ISL the the to get the associate membership you have to be a four year engineering recognized by the ISL. And similarly the 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 engineering diplomates. A diploma recognized by the double ISL, they will get the associate membership of the double ISL. And after they get the experience and the competencies, so they can become the incorporated engineers of the double ISL. So the, the education qualification to become their membership is the, the diploma, whereas ISL is the degree. <clears throat> and a chartered engineer from Sri Lanka Engineering Service. So engineering service is the service where the now in the public sector, that means the fully government sector, the there are there is a public the public service commission is there coming under the public administration ministry. So the there are seven areas. One area is the engineering, other one the accounting, IT, uh, like that. The, uh, medicine uh, for they are <coughs> the they are looking after the public service uh, that means the dip, mainly the departments and the provincial councils provincial council uh, part so there is one engineer representing from the the sri lanka engineering service and one member from tv is to represent engineering technicians so another member is coming from the TVC. They are nominated members. So this is the composition of the Engineering Council Sri Lanka. <clears throat> and Engineering Council Sri Lanka registered six categories of engineering practitioners. So they are the Chartered Engineer, Associate Engineer, and Affiliate Engineer. Other two is the Incorporate Engineer, Engineering Diplomate. Other one is the Engineering Technician. Now, these first three categories, Chartered Engineer, Associate Engineer, Affiliate Engineer, to get the registration, they have to come via ISL. First, you have to get the relevant membership in the ISL. Then you pay the registration fee. Then ISL will send the list to Engineering Council Sri Lanka. So they should come to the relevant professional body. An incorporate engineer and the engineering diplomat, they should come to the double ISL. And engineering technicians, they are the, the electricians, the carpenters, and the welders like that. Uh, they can directly register in the engineering council. So they have to at least have the NVQ4 qualification. So vocational qualification, NVQ4. <clears throat> the required qualifications, chartered engineer, he should be a charter to get the registration in the chartered engineer. He should be a chartered engineer of the ISL. Associate engineer, he should be a four year full time degree equal recognized by ISL. That means he should be an associate member of ISL. Affiliate engineer, three year full time degree recognized by ISL. So he should be affiliate member of ISL. So incorporated engineer, he should be incorporated engineer of IES, double ISL. Then engineering diplomat, diploma in engineering recognized by double IES. It should be their associate member. Really. Engineering technician, at least in VQ4, you should have or it's equivalent 
equivalent also defined in the act. <clears throat> okay, uh, any question up to here? Engineering Council. Now, the as per the law, you cannot practice in the country as an engineer without registering in the Engineering Council. So, once you get your degree, you will come to the Associate Engineer category. So, you have to register in the Associate Engineer in the Engineering Council. To register that one, you have to get the Associate Member of the ISL. So, therefore, just passed out from the University, immediately get the Associate Membership of the ISL. Along with that, uh, you can pay for the Engineering Council registration, then you can get the Engineering Council registration also. Any question? Right. Now, you have the idea about the professional bodies and the regulatory bodies. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this will give some insight to you. Uh, what, are the, what are their functions and what is their importance uh, and the why uh, a profession like very important profession like engineering needs the professional body as well as well as a regulatory body. Now, I hope now you have the idea about that one, right? If you have any question, you can type it or you can ask. After that, we thought to give you some idea about the industry, what are your career paths? <coughs> career path of engineers. Uh, understanding of this one is also, we thought, important because the, there are different uh, designations in the industry. So I will explain that one. <coughs> So you can employ as the engineer, that is your first appointment. <coughs> After about five years experience under chartered engineer, <coughs> you can become a chartered engineer. <coughs> the hierarchy of engineers, there are different types of hierarchies. The recruitment level, you can say engineer. After about five years, you can say senior engineer. <coughs> then you can say the, after about 10 years, you can say deputy general manager. Then about after about 15 years, you can become about, so the with about 15 years experience, you can get about, not the after about, the total years 15 about general manager. <coughs> then after about 20 years, which is a chief officer. Then the topmost position is the chief executive officer. But these uh, numbers, the experience are, these are general numbers, but the just having experience is not sufficient to go to this level. Actually, this is the uh, hierarchy of the Sri Lanka Telecom. Uh, Mr. Asela, you can add something to this one? Yeah, it's a, it's a typical <coughs> hierarchy, but uh, it's not uh, strict like that. Uh, depending on your performance, then only you can go up the ladder, but there are some some engineers might say, stay as a senior engineer for the whole of their career, but some will uh, climb the ladder uh, because the climbing the ladder means you are in the management positions and uh, more responsibilities. But somebody want to be a technical <coughs> specialist, you can stay in a technical role uh, and uh, can uh, avoid taking management responsibilities. That is up to you to decide. So these number of years are, as Mr. Tilakula said, are just uh, indications. Uh, it can vary a lot. Yeah, now the when you come to the chief officer position, there are about 10 positions, I think. How many positions? Uh, are now there are 12 or 13, I think. Uh, the total number of employees is, uh, I think, Eight. more Seven than 8,000. 11,000. 8,000 or 7,000, yes. Say about 8,000 from the 8,000 employees, there are about 13 positions for the chief officer. So from that also chief finance officer, few posts are not engineers. So the only very few engineers can go to that level. Now the, in addition to that, there are subsidiaries in the, in the Sri Lanka Telecom. So the, uh, Mr. Asaila the chief executive officer is one of the subsidiaries. The, 
that is the sri lanka the telecom services telecom services sri lanka telecom service what is the function of the sri lanka telecom services it's a uh, telecom <laughs> projects and uh, ict uh, solutions provider system integrator yeah and software development company there are some few uh, another subsidiaries actually when i was in telecom i was the chief global officer chief network officer and many chief officers in addition to that i was the chief executive of of the of the slt hong kong it's a subsidiary of that one. so likewise the so you have different opportunities in the industry so this is a typical hierarchy to get an idea <clears throat> and in some other organizations was for instance say the just like the ceb now the you can see in the slt general manager is the, the third the, from the top to third level whereas with the ceb and the, it's the first highest level is the general manager <clears throat> So you can have the engineer, senior engineer, deputy general manager, assistant general manager, additional general manager, then the just like the general manager. But there are some, yeah. some, uh, think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ra railway also <coughs> is like that, I think. Right? Yeah, general manager also, is general the top. Manager. Yeah. <coughs> now you can see after the particular level, you cannot go beyond that if you don't have the charter. Now, to become a deputy general manager, you have to have it's a must because the <clears throat> you can get this engineer position through the experience also experience plus some other alternative uh, the education qualifications. But when you go to the higher of the ladder, the charter is a must. Another hierarchy is the. <clears throat> Engineer, senior engineer, assistant director, director, additional director, di additional director general, and the director general. Now, when you see the road development authority, their head is the director general, and the additional director general are there. When you see the irrigation department, their head is director general, then the additional director general and the directors are there. So, this is another hierarchy. Okay, uh, this is in the actually the public and the semi-government the sector, but when you go to the, the private sector, this uh, hierarchy may be changed, but the, the private sector, the topmost is normally chief executive officer, uh, but not very much hierarchical in the private sector. Uh, we can't say that this lower level is the no, not important because the each and every level is doing some important work and the your performance the your success will be measured from the performance yeah so that's all and uh, i can give uh, mr sailor to add something to this one yeah it, uh, and the uh, in some private companies, the hierarchies are like uh, vice president, uh, senior vice president, and then uh, like that there are different naming conventions uh, mm -hmm. that comes from uh, US and uh, British uh, influence, actually. The naming conventions are different. Uh, so, uh, and the next thing that we want you to do, students, there are only few left in the uh, they do in the session maybe due to the power cut. Uh, uh, we, uh, we would like you to go to IASL website and read the uh, search Google for IASL code of ethics and uh, read that. Uh, and then uh, next, uh, next session, we will need that knowledge. So uh, I expect everybody to go through it uh, systematically and understand it there are eight codes of ethics for isl uh, if we can uh, show it on the web it will be helpful uh, let me see okay any question you have right asaila then shall you stop then yeah okay. we can yeah Okay, then when we, we conclude the class for today.